Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Furlongs and Horses. My name is Rachel and I'm your host. You can find me at my regular blog, furlongdrive.blogspot.com or at Road to the Cup, which can be found at Road to the Cup uh, blog.blogspot.com. It is actually Saturday, October 4th, 2014. And as you can see by the background, I'm home. Uh, I had a wonderful trip to Connecticut, and uh, my sister and I are actually going back uh, the week before the Breeders' Cup, uh, just her and I, uh, just to hang out um, and try to bond a little more. That's not here for our uh, there. Uh, focusing on uh, the race that I'm going to be previewing, which is the Spinster. It is a win you're in for the distaff at a mile and eighth at Keeneland on dirt. Yes, Keeneland is officially back to dirt. Yesterday was actually the first day uh, on a new dirt surface. Um, I had planned to do a video on the Shadow Bulb Mile, uh, but I was I still had the cough. I kind of still do, but it's not as bad right now. Um. And I had last week. Um, <clears throat> but also, I just I was kind of lazy and didn't really want to uh, do the preview. Uh, but I do want to do one for the spinster because the belt, the belt aim was not winning your in. And I had done two classic previews last week. So I really wanted to do another distaff. So I decided just to do um, the spinster. Um, it's a very small field, only six horses are going, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. Number one is Ria Antonia. Paco Lopez will ride for Tom Amos. Oh boy. Ria, Ria, Ria. She's by Rockport Harbor, of course, the defending Breers Cup General Phillies winner. Uh, after she finished second, but was elevated the first via the DQ of She's a Tiger. Not a good year. Uh, fourth in her last two races, the Lucas Grove and the Monmouth Oaks. That second is st second crossing the wire. It's starting to look more and more fluky. Um, with every passing race. She shouldn't have been in the Oaks. She certainly shouldn't have been in the Preakness. Um, she, Tom Amos is her third trainer this year. Um, it's just, just the way she's been ma mismanaged uh, throughout everything has not been good. <clears throat> Number two is Close Hatches, Joel Rosario. Uh, rides for Belmont. She's by first defense, and she's the opposite end of mismanagement. She's been wonderfully managed. Um, she, uh, won the personal essay and the Phipps. Skipped last week's Bell Dame um, to go here instead. Uh, probably a good move because I don't know if anyone was going to catch the winner, Bell Glanty. Um, she is a very different filly last year. And she was pretty good last year. She won a grade one, um, at Parks in the Cotillion. Um, but she is a certainly different filly, um, this year, um, than she was last year as the runner-up in the distaff. If she wins here, Beholder might have her hands full, um, but Beholder is... The current Breeders Cup uh, queen, so we'll have to see how that goes. <clears throat> Number three is Got Lucky. She's by AP and D. Rosie in the Problem rides by Todd Pletcher. Um, for Todd Pletcher, I said by um, Miss Music. Fifth in the Alabama. Um, she won an allowance earlier this year. Had shown promise earlier. Um, as well. I believe she was second in Rachel Alexandra. Um, 
this was a church show, I would have more confidence in her. Um, because she is out of a, her dam is out of, um, Supercharger, I think. Yeah, pretty sure her dam is, uh, out of Supercharger, who of course is the dam of Super Saver. You know what, I'm just gonna quickly look that up. Um, pretty sure Supercharger, uh, her dam is out of, sorry, Get Lucky, um, who is the, uh, dam of Supercharger, um, <clears throat> dam of Super Saver. I made a mistake about that. Uh, she, her dam's out of Get Lucky, who is, uh, the dam of Gerolamo, um, she's a winner, the dam of Super, of a Bluegrass Cat, um, and Supercharger, who is the dam of Super Saver, so made a mistake about that. Same female family, though, as Super Saver, Bluegrass Cat, uh, Brethren, uh, who is a promising horse, um, so, very good female family. As I said, if this was at Churchill, I would have had, I would have more confidence in her. But the fact that it's at Keeneland, I'm not 100% sure. Um, number four is Sharuk. Julian Leperu will ride for Saeed Bin Sorar. That's right. Saeed Bin Sorar, uh, for the first time in, I think, about two or three years. Um, I forget when Godolphin decided to just stick with their U.S. trainers for, uh, the, for those who will be wearing blue and then just have, uh, Saeed focus on the European, uh, <clears throat> uh, horses. Um, it's been a couple of years since I think he's had, <coughs> sorry, a horse in the uh, U.S. Um, Shirks by Elizabeth Quality. She won in Turkey last time out. And she was 8th in the Godolphin Mile. Um, this is going to be her first U.S. Um, start. And her first start on conventional dirt. Um, of course, she has that uh, synthetic experience. <coughs> synthetic experience. But... It's going to be, um, if she can handle, uh, the dirt surface. Um, number five is Don't Tell Sophia. Joe Rocco Jr. will ride for Phil Sims. She is by Hungary. And this is a filly who looks like, finally, at age of six, has finally put everything together. Um, uh... Won the Locust Grove in her last. Uh, that was off a layoff. She was third in the Azari. Um, I think she has a major chance here. Um, like Got Lucky, I think if this race was at Churchill, I might have actually put her ahead of Close Hatches. Um, for the, uh, but the fact that is at Keeneland, I think it's going to, she'll have a little bit tougher time, but I think she'll be okay. Um, here. And finally, number six, Molly Morgan. She's by Ghost Zapper. Corey Lannery rides for Dale Roman. Second in Locust Grove. She won the Gardenia. Um, she's actually the only horse in the field who has Keeneland experience. It was on the turf, but it was Keeneland experience. Um, and then she was second here. I think last year, I believe. Not 100% sure. But that is the field for the spinster. Again, the field is number one, Ria Antonia. Number two, Close Hatches. Number three, Got Lucky. Number four, Sharuk. Number five, Don't Tell Sophia. And number six, Molly Morgan. So that is your field for the spinster. And up next will be the picks. Um, so to win, I, I don't think anyone's going to be close hatches. Um, she is number one filly in the country right now. Even if she loses, I think I have her just below Beholder. Um, but if she wins, she'll stay uh, ahead of Beholder. Um, she's just a very 
excellent filly. Um, up until um, the personal ensign, my only concern was um, the mile and eighth distance, just the fact of who her sire is. Um, but now that she's one and a mile and eighth, I don't feel that's um, a major problem anymore. Um, hopefully. Uh, but, uh, I just feel like that she's by far the best filly in this race. Uh, in second, I was debating whether to go with, um, three horses. And I decided to go with Don't Tell Sophia. The fact that even though it's not a Churchill, we're still in Kentucky. Um... I just feel like that she is, um, the best of the rest in this race, and, um, if something where Close Hatches were to falter, um, she would be there to, um, pick up the pieces, and so I feel like that she is the, uh, best position to be, um, for, uh, uh, the runner-up spot, and for the show spot, spot uh, for third, of course, I was debating between Sharuk and Molly Morgan. I went with Sharuk over Molly only for the fact that um, yesterday there was a filly um, in the Alcibiades named Peace and War who is making her U.S. and Dirt debut, and she, um, conventional Dirt, I should say. Um, uh, and she won, uh, off the pace. I feel like that Shruch, in theory, is actually the best horse in the race. The fact that she has, um, international experience. But when you put her on conventional dirt, I don't think she will be, do as well as Close Hatches don't so uh, don't tell Sophia, um, maybe Molly as well, but I think, uh, she could get, she could get second over, over Molly and Sophia, um, but I just feel like that, um, right now she might need a race to just get used to having it under her feet, um, so to win, I like close hatches, uh, to finish second, I like uh, Don't Tell Sophia and I sure to finish third. Um, I don't have a dark horse for this race uh, because there are only six horses. Um, certainly Molly Morgan um, is, I feel better than both Rhea Antonia and Got Lucky. I think Got Lucky is the better of the two three-year-olds. Uh, Rhea is just right now in a very very bad place and I just feel like um she should she shouldn't even be in stakes races I feel like at this point um maybe they can eventually go back to stakes races but it just I, I, I don't know it's not good for her um but that is it for the win in your in videos this could be the last one um, because after tomorrow's spinster, uh, there's only one more race. Uh, also on the card tomorrow at Keeneland is the Bourbon, which is a, which is the Juvenile Turf, um, when you're in, when you're in, uh, tomorrow's a big day in France. Um, there are several when and you're in, uh, races, but the biggest one on the day is not when you're in, it is the Arctic. Arc de Trump uh de Trump uh, ah, the Arc. Just call it that. Uh you you'll you know what race it is. Um no Australia. Um no the great Gatsby. Uh Taruga who's already into the turf, I believe is there. Um <coughs> It's a great day on um, both sides of the Atlantic. Um the final when you're in 
is the Jessamine that will be on Wednesday, and then we are done. Um, so enjoy the racing of the day, Champagne, Shadwell, Turf Mile, featuring Y Stan. Um, just a little bit of, uh, well, by the time you see this, the race will have been run. Um, but I'm actually picking Y Stan in the race. Um, but I'm doing it with a little bit of tep teptation. Tep it's not even <laughs> the right word. Um, anyway, I've been babbling on for too long. Um, I will see you at the end of October, um, with, uh, Breeders' Cup stuff. So, until then, bye!